Hi folks, Sath here. Welcome to this Agile 20 Reflect interview in our Meet the Patron series. In this wonderful edition, I am delighted to be joined by none other than Alistair Coburn himself. Hi Alistair, how are you doing? Thank you. How are you doing? I love the way you tried to keep a straight face, man. You look. I did. Good, I did. Right? I did. Good. I knew. I knew you would pick up on that. Well, there you, you go. Really cracked a smile, and I was. I was in tears watching you. <laughs> right. So, I mean, Alistair, you, 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 you don't really need any introduction, but yes, just for our, just for, our, just for our viewers. Yeah. Can you give us a? Just give us a quick. Just give us a quick intro. Just introduce yourself in any way you like. Give us a quick intro. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm known for two things. Um, the thing I'm known, known the most for actually is for a book called Writing Effective Use Cases. And more people have read that book than, than maybe even know me from the Agile. And then I'm one of the authors of the Agile Manifesto. And I started with this work in 1991, interviewing teams. And all of my work comes basically out of running projects and interviewing teams and all the stories they told me. So everything I have to say is you know, comes from that experience. Oh, and I'm freelance. I was a nomad for six years. I had no home. I lived out of a suitcase in a backpack and I went around the world once per year. And that was a wonderful time. And now I'm living in Florida. Wow, lovely, wonderful introduction. And I've had a nice little uh, virtual tour of your, your new abode. Yeah, I love this house. Love this sunny Florida. Hurricane yeah. at some point in time, but I love the heat. Sorry, I go to Cuba in July and come back to Florida in August. No, you're just show, you're just showing off with the sun because I uh, obviously you know I'm in Scotland, and uh, the last time we met, I distinctly remember you introducing me to Coburn's Port. So there you go. I've never forgot it. So you have a question for me? What you got? I do, I do, I do have many questions for you. Let, let's start with an obvious question. So. We're obviously delighted that you'd uh, agreed to accept our invitation to become a patron. Uh, but what you know, what 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 made you want to agree to do this? Why have you why have you agreed to get involved and support us? It's all Scott's fault. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Scott knows this. It's like all Scott. Uh, Scott is uh, one of the sort of the key active members of the Heart of Agile community. Um, and I always pay attention to what he does. He does everything with a lot of heart and a, and a lot of emotion and all in. And he said, I want to really celebrate the 20th anniversary. I want to do some reflecting. I want to look back. I want to look forward. I want to make it big. And I said, you know, good luck to you. I've already done that. I'm not organizing nothing, but I'm happy to support you. Like, you know, thumbs up, emotional support. Let's go. So, uh, and I've been been watching the organization it's gone around the world it's fully global the background behind you is the perfect picture for to summarize like this this event so it's festival so i'm happy i'm happy to be here but brilliant no that's really good and i love that no you're spot on you're spot on and uh, yeah he keeps pulling me into things but he as you see he does it with so much heart you can't yeah. help but get caught up in it right yeah yeah right so you know you, you're obviously one of the original authors of the manifesto and you've made huge contributions to the industry over the many years and decades now since then um you'll be you know a great inspiration to many and a hero to many and many of us are huge fans of your work who who's your agile hero who you know who who, who would you like to celebrate on this on this on in this interview who, who's your hero um I would say, and, and pardon me, a call just came in and, and ruined the vocal, so I'm going back, putting my phone on airplane mode, right? So, so I won't get bothered by noises again. All right, who's my hero? Agile hero. Yeah. I'm yeah. you know, thinking about this because um, you know that's a big that's a big question, and I have two, um, uh, uh, a man and a woman. I don't know which wooden to give first. I'll I'll, I'll give first um, uh, Jeff Patton. Cool. And uh, Jeff Patton was my neighbor in Salt Lake City for uh, a bunch of years from about, I don't know, 2001 or two till about, well, till 2012. So for like 10 years. And we would both take trips and come back and exchange notes in the mm. coffee shop. You know, what did you see on your trip? What did you see on your trip? And we learned so much from each other. And uh, he used to say, uh, yeah, I don't think I do agile. I think, I think I don't, I'm not agile. I don't have this, whatever, because I disagree with everybody else. Now, 
Now, what I learned is when Jeff disagrees with everybody else, you better listen to what Jeff has to say, right? So what I learned is, um, in, in, and I'll, there's what I call fast twitch and slow twitch agile. So in, in sports, the fast twitch muscles are the ones that jerk quickly and the sprinters have them, right? The 100, the 100 meter run, right? And slow twitch are the ones that go forever. And, yeah. and like for marathon runners, right? So your muscles okay. are both fast and slow twitch. But most of agile, and me, I, you can see my hand movements, right? I'm fast twitch. I'm a sprinter. Yeah. Everything is quick, quick reflex, change of direction. When we talk about agile, we talk about rapid change of direction like this. Yep. It's fast twitch. Yeah. And Jeff is slow twitch, right? He does everything slowly, thoughtfully, right? So in that sense, he doesn't look like he fits the agile mold, right? But in fact, in, in business, you don't have to move that quickly. You don't need fast twitch muscles, right? And so he, he does his things in a kind of a slow, deliberate way, but he's got this wonderful sensation, you know, following and listening, mm -hmm. listen from. And so watching him from, you know, 2000 suffering with XP in 2000, 2001, to becoming really, you know, the, the, the leader of the industry that he is these days with his, with his spectacular views, He's definitely one of the one of the two, and the other one is a lady by the name of Gabrielle Benefield. And she's from New Zealand, um, and and lives all over the world with a family. They travel around. They settle different places. I never. She's in London or in or in Portugal. I don't know. Which yeah, country. she's in London. Yeah, yeah. and she was uh, uh, she was doing the stuff that we're trying to teach product managers to do now. In the last five years, she was doing in the late 90s in startup companies. So she's like always been five, 10 years ahead of the curve. And I listened to everything she does. A couple of years ago, uh, uh, we gave our very first Heart of Agile award. And I gave it to Gabrielle. Yeah. Um, she, her, she's the author of a thing called Mobius. In 2013, I took her class and listening to her talk, I said, we're now in the post-Agile age because everything she talked about presupposed agile but it was so buried in there you wouldn't be able to say now we're doing agile no if, if you, you you would have to be all the agile things to even exist inside of her concept and that was right. in 2015 seven years ago so those yeah. two definitely would be my two heroes no i'm, I'm glad you mentioned gabrielle she's uh, on our list of interviewees and i'm, I'm due to do that Soon, okay. so yeah, fab. No, great. She, makes, she just makes everything look easy, you know. When she and then when you look at her story, she did you know three impossible things before breakfast, kind of stuff. You know? <laughs> and she goes, Love "Well, I, I just you know, whatever." Yeah. Anyway, what's up? <laughs> Super. No, that was I great. love the that fact that you can't keep a straight face. Do you have this problem all the time with your interviews, Seth? Bob? You do. You do be. You do be. I, I'm a happy kind of guy. You know, I like. I like to smile and laugh. You know, so you good. Go. So good. So, you again. You know, you you you've been around. You know, a while. You know, you, you provide lots of advice to people. What 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 would you say to someone coming into the industry in 2021? What advice would you like to give them? Um, because I'll, t I'll tell you a little bit what's on my mind. I don't have a short phrasing for it, but I have something that's on my mind and it's not, it's not well formed, but it's about looking past the structures mm -hmm. into the behaviors. So anybody who's starting with Agile, let's say they're not starting with Scrum. Let's say literally they don't know, they don't care. They want to, don't want to know about Scrum, say dead, nothing, nothing. They just want to, then, then all I would say is, is um, the first value of the manifesto says individuals and interactions over processes and tools. The third one says customer collaboration. So 50% of it is about collaboration. Yeah. yeah, for someone who's starting, it's just like pay attention to the nature of the collaboration, where it's good, where it's bad. When you amp up the collaboration, everything gets better, period, right? And the second value of the manifesto says delivery, it says working software, but outside of software, it's, it's getting real feedback from the real world, probing the real world, not, talk, not being caught in an echo bubble. And so for somebody getting started, getting started is now again, whether using Scrum, not Scrum, a framework, not a framework, yeah. look for how are you getting feedback? Where's your feedback coming from? 
So we just take those two things that, and then that will hopefully permit them to look past any of the frameworks, any of the structures, any of the meaning, yeah. just as is the collaboration getting better and are we getting feedback from the real world? Yeah. And with those two, uh, that will allow them to grow, to see past the structures. That's what I have to say. Oh, brilliant. Loved it. Exactly what I was hoping you would say. So back, back to the exactly original values and mindset. Oh my God. Right? That, is, that is brilliant. Mind, mindset and values, right? Now, so I don't like the word mindset. And, and, and this is well, recent. Came up, came up in our uh, coffee corner chat that we do every week. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the problem is that mindset is too vague. And so I, mm. I learned at the end of that discussion we had, uh, replace it with attitude. Because okay. I think you can you could substitute the word attitude for mindset and people understand it better and there's no damage. So, okay. so, wow. so the thing is, if people don't want to collaborate, they don't collaborate. Mm. That's not mindset, that's attitude. And okay. if people are supposed to deliver in, in small fragments and they don't want to, they'll just find ways not to. So no. although it's technical, the delivery part's technical, it's actually still at least, you know, half, three quarters, like do they want to? And if they want to, they, they'll find a way. Right and reflecting and improving is all attitude. So it's you know it's like so so I would prefer if people said um, it's easier I think to teach um, attitude like have the attitude toward collaborating better is is a lot easier to understand than to say have an agile mindset and you go what's that and you explain it and they go anyway so I've shifted from mindset to the word attitude. I'll let you know that. No, I love it. No, no, I, yeah, big, big tick the box. Second, that's second that's made my day. I like that. That 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 that's going to work for everybody who watches this. I think. Um, <laughs> Super. Yeah, yeah. Well, so if that's someone, someone joining it, the agile community, yeah. right? It's, no, it's great. Attitude is nine tenths of the game. So does yeah. anybody want to? Yeah. yeah, I still remember when you joined the. Um, we did the session with uh, Squirrel and and Jeffrey. Agile conversations, and you, you joined at starting of the chat. And, and to be honest, that's what I loved about that session because they were talking in great depth about the power and importance of the conversation. And that's yeah. kind of where I am with it as well. You know, that's 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 yeah. the ticket. You know, right? No, great, brilliant. Right, I've got a fun one for you. Yeah. Right, so if you could be any age, hmm. any age you wanted for hmm. a week. Say, mm. say for the sake of argument next week, be any age you wanted, what age would you choose and why? Mm. Dang it. Um, so I have a totally tongue-in-cheek answer that's not correct, but <laughs> I'd like to be dead. Because I, oh, don't want, I don't want... Yeah, no, it, it's, it's the post-election time. I kind of don't want to experience all the post-election nonsense. But then I would have to wake up and the post... And, you know, I only have to be dead for a week. So it doesn't do me any good. Um, yeah, I have trouble with this because next, exactly here in Florida where I just bought the house, I don't know what the optimal age is, but I can tell you my happiest age ever was age 19. Okay. I was a junior at, at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. Nice. It was the best year of my life. And every day I said, I love being 19. Every day, I love being 19. It's the perfect age for being where I was at the time. I don't know if I'm not from Florida, but that was like the best. Like I've loved all pretty much all my ages, but that year, literally every day, I said, "Man, I love being 19." <laughs> oh, that's great. Absolutely, all of that. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you've admirably answered my question and explained your rationale. Yeah, we, could, yeah. we, could, we could, we could, we could, ask no more. Right, we're on to the last one. So we've talked, you know, a little bit about agile reflect at the start. You know, you you wonderfully explained your your motivations for getting involved. So, you know, there's a lot of people working really hard to kind of, you know, make it a huge success. We're all really excited about it. What are you, what are you hoping it might achieve? Well, at the end of February, you know, after a month long celebration of a variety of events, what are you, what are you, what are you I hoping always, it could achieve? Always with these things, what, what I hope happens is that people see into someone else's mind. Okay. That, that literally, if we have a workshop, I've been to workshops, you have a one day workshop on, you know, pick a topic. And people always want to come to some um, a conclusion, resolution, announcement, you know, PR thing at the end of the day. And I go, I, you know, that doesn't interest me because then you have, you're, you're not sure what you really have. Like literally, if let's say there's 10 or 15 people in the room, 
if they can all just open their minds up and you could look inside and see what's inside somebody else's mind, then you can make your own decisions what to do about mm. it. But it's so interesting sure. what's in someone else's mind, right? So if I look at Agile 20 Reflect Festival, like around the world, lots of different events, interviews, workshops, sessions, right? We have all cultures, all different kinds of people coming in that people get a chance to peek inside the minds of other people, right? They go, oh, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't think that mm -hmm. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, look at that, right? Then they make up their own minds after that. So that's what, that's what I hope. Nice. No, brilliant. No, I do like that. No, we are definitely invested in bringing people together. It's what, what's really driving a lot of us, you know, that passion. And even when I've been seeing you ambassadors coming on and joining us, from yeah. all corners of the world, it, it's really quite thrilling to see. Yeah. So yeah, no, absolutely brilliant. And uh, that brings us to the end. It's always a delight to speak to you and hear okay. from you. I I enjoyed your uh, your thoughts and insights as ever, and I'm sure our viewers uh, will do likewise, and uh, it will get watched back a few times. So it's okay. fun chatting to you. So Thank thanks you. for your time as ever, and uh, enjoy the enjoy the new home. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure I'll I'm sure I'll catch it with you again at some point. Right. And that was that was our little sort of conversation with the one and only Alistair Coburn. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and uh, look forward to more of these in our series coming up. Thanks right. again for listening. Great stuff. Over and out.